This is the Ad O Master Junior The Magic Calculator. Made by the Misto Plane Company in 1941. Ad with one D. It's a thick cardboard thing with a turny wheel on the inside. It has an answer window over here, and another one over here. A turny thing for adding and subtracting, and another turny thing to multiply. Look here on the back. Painted on wood grain. Classy. The Misto Plane Company was a toy maker in the 1930s. Their products actually look a lot like modern sort of tech toys for kids. Like part of the fun is learning how to use it and the marketing is all about how your kid's going to learn some great science. The company name comes from their first big product, the Misto Plane. They called it a remote control airplane and you controlled it with this magic wand. Really it was based on static electricity. The plane was sort of a spinny thing made of super light metal foil that would more or less float around on its own. And then you rub the magic wand with a cloth to charge it up with static electricity. And when you move the wand near the thing, it'll make it float around in weird ways. Actually, it sounds kind of fun. They also made the Mistoscope. It's a kaleidoscope with a window cut in the side so you can kind of see how it works. So you got the Misto plane then the Mistoscope, and then they decided to make some kind of adding machine. What are they going to call it? The Mistomath? Mistocalc? Mistoad? Nope. It's the Ad O Master Junior, the Magic Calculator. Okay, I guess. It's really a pretty standard turny wheel chart that you use with a stylus. And I just happen to have the original, original stylus. I actually really like the stylus. It looks just like a pencil, but with no lead in it. Looks like they just ran a plain wooden dowel through a pencil sharpener. I like that. The main operation for this thing is adding and subtracting. You start with the answer window showing zero, and then you add or subtract by sticking the stylus into the hole next to the number you want. So to add five, I do like this. And then I'll add 17 like this. And that's about it. You want to subtract, you read those numbers on the other side, and you turn the dial the other way. So here I have 22, and then I'll subtract 12, and you get 10. All right. There's nothing to really lock the answers in place, so you can misalign the wheels if you're not careful. The angle at which you hold the stylus will make a bit of a difference here. And the holes aren't aligned too well anyway. After adding a number and sliding a hole all the way to the bottom, like you're supposed to, the hole for the 20 is automatically misaligned with the groove, so you can just barely grab it. My cardboard is a little warped after all these years, so maybe it's just mine that has that issue. There's no way to reset the answer to zero automatically, you just have to dial it back yourself. And also the answer only shows up to 99 before rolling over back to zero. This means if your total exceeds 100, you'll have to keep track of the hundreds digit yourself. And to help you out, you get this little window here add 100 when white spot passes so as you're adding you've got to watch this window and make sure you don't miss the white spot flying by you ready they actually did this pretty well i was expecting a tiny spot that you would easily miss but they put a giant pretty noticeable spot there which i guess is as good as they could have done cheap devices like this often claim that they could do multiplication too but they just told you to add repeatedly but the Add O Master Junior, the magic calculator, actually does direct multiplications. You just spin the thing until your first number appears somewhere in this window. Then you line it up with the second number and read the answer. There we go. 6 times 2 is 12. Or 6 times 5 looks like this. They give you another track up here to use with your stylus, but it's smaller than the other one. I find it easier to just use the one over here while you're looking in the multiplication area. So, the Ad O Master Junior, the Magic Calculator. It's okay, I guess. Oh, did I mention I have the original box and the original Ad O Master Junior quiz book? The box is pretty classic. You got the two kids here around the border, you got random numbers. This is absolutely typical marketing for certain kinds of adding machines at the time. Not the serious business ones, but the cute, fun ones. You know, for the kids. It's exciting, amusing, and educational. Here it says, won't get out of order. 
can't get out of order. The quiz book has some basic instructions about how to use it and two examples here. And then they give you some for you to try. Oh my gracious. This is the kind of no context arithmetical nonsense that made entire generations of Americans hate math. I don't know about you, but I never liked math as a kid, precisely because I had to endlessly solve stupid problems like this. And look how these things mix the operations together. Check out problem number 164, 9 plus 12 minus 16 times 7. This is one of those stupid clickbait news articles. Here's a fourth grade math problem that stumped the internet. These things always boil down to rules about order of operations. Like you're supposed to do multiplications and divisions first, and then additions and subtractions. And if you do it in a different order, you get a different answer. And guess what? The writers of the Ad O Master Junior quiz book didn't use the standard order of operations. I thought they said can't get out of order. They just want you to do everything left to right. So when you see 9 plus 12 minus 16 times 7, they do 9 plus 12 first, which is 21, then subtract 16, which is 5, and then multiply by 7, which is 35. The standard way of evaluating this would be to multiply 16 times 7 first, which you can't even do on the Add O Master Junior, the magic calculator. And then you would add and subtract, and you'd get a large negative answer, which is also impossible on the Add O Master Junior, the magic calculator. So they did it in the wrong order. I guess the internet's not the only one who stumped. People get fixated on silly stuff like this, but really it's just following cultural rules about how we read and write formulas. It's got nothing to do with actual mathematics, which is about logic and reason and truth and beauty. If you do it in the wrong order, it's not really a mathematical error. I would say what we have here is a failure to communicate. Sure, we sometimes write formulas like this in mathematics, but the entire point of writing something is to communicate it effectively to the reader. Because we're doing math, we're not trying to stump the internet. And written formulas are like any writing. They're meant to communicate something. Like, here's a really simple formula. A typical kid who's trained by doing math worksheets over and over will look at this and feel some kind of compulsion to evaluate the answer. It's 24. But that's not really what the formula means. To me, it means something kind of like this. And a more complicated formula like this one maybe means something like this. And here's a similar formula, which means this. And what's the difference between these two formulas? Well, they mean different things. What, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. When I look at the Add O Master, the Magic Calculator quiz book problems, there is meaning here, but I'm just supposed to find the answers. Looking for logic and reason and truth and beauty here is just going to slow me down. I don't know about you, but I reject this soulless sea of arithmetical nonsense. I mean, look at this kid. He's lost in a vapid emptiness of numerical trivialities. He's obsessed with problems and solutions, right and wrong, sweating his way through life, just desperately trying not to mess it all up. This is not the face of a mathematician. But this, the gaze of love the expectant anticipation of unseen vistas gradually coming into focus. This 1930s child, almost certainly now deceased, this is the face of a mathematician at work. I hope she found what she was looking for. Mm -hmm.